Look at those eyes, those ears, and that wagging tail. What's not to love about a dog? Some of us love everything about all dogs, but not every dog is right for everybody. Before you start looking for the perfect dog, ask yourself, which woof's for me? In this episode, we'll explore the lifestyles and personalities of two of the most popular breeds, the Boston Terrier and the Bulldog. Two very different dogs, yet each has traits you might like in a canine companion. First up, the Boston Terrier. These little guys started out as much bigger dogs. In the early 1800s, its ancestors, a mix of the English Bulldog and the now extinct White English Terrier, were 100 pounds or more. Originally bred for bull baiting and pit fighting, the first Bostons were true bulldogs, prized as aggressive fighters. Once pit fighting became illegal, breeders developed a much smaller, gentler dog. Its popularity blossomed quickly in this country, and the amiable breed soon earned the nickname of American Gentleman. The Boston Terrier also claims the title of being a purely American creation and was admitted to the American Kennel Club Stud Book in 1893. It's now ranked at number 23 in popularity. I think what makes Boston Terriers so special is the way they interact with the family. Um, Bostons bond very closely with their humans, um, all their humans, the children, the adults, everyone in their family. And uh, there's a saying that you've never been loved until you've been loved by a Boston, and I think that's true. Even though it's classified as a non-sporting breed, the Boston Terrier is a natural athlete. They do remarkably well at agility, fly ball, and obedience. They just do anything and everything I want to do. They're athletic, they can stand up for themselves, and yet they have a very nice on-off switch. The Boston's markings resemble a tuxedo and give this breed the appearance of being dressed up and ready for fun. Ideally, the Boston Terrier weighs anywhere from 10 to 25 pounds and its coat is predominantly brindle, seal, or black with white markings. The Boston's small size makes it a great traveling companion. Its short snout, small nostrils, and adorable face recall its bulldog ancestry, while the compact build, strong limbs, and short tail signal terrier. Sometimes called Boston bulls or roundheads, these amusing, bright, and friendly dogs are highly intelligent, easy to train, excel at agility trials, and love to run and play. Hear that? It's the signature sound of the Boston Terrier. Boston Terriers, which are a brachiocephalic breed, short-nosed, white head, don't tend to have the problems breathing that a lot of the other brachycephalic breeds do. These tend to breathe a little bit easier, so there's something different in the way that they're designed that allow them to be a little bit easier, but obviously it's something you need to watch for. While grooming is minimal, the Boston Terrier needs to have its face cleaned regularly to keep debris or moisture from building up in the wrinkle. Shedding is not a problem, just a little touch up with a soft bristle brush a couple times a week. I do toenails once a week. That's pretty critical because Boston Terriers do have what I describe as kitty cat feet. So they are up on their toes. If their toenails get too long, it really can um, negatively impact their feet. And so I do tend to do whiskers. I like the clean shaven. And beyond that, it's about maybe five, maybe six minutes if I need to give them a bath. To keep those big eyes shiny and bright, Boston owners advise some special care. Because their eyes are so large and prominent, rose bushes are enemies of Boston Terriers. You, you have to make sure that they have a safe environment and aren't you know, getting thorns or anything in their eyes. With an expected lifespan of 12 to 14 years, the Boston Terrier is a resilient breed. But choosing a puppy from a reputable breeder is very important to ensure the Boston's genetic makeup and the expectation of a long, healthy life. Moderate exercise is key to keeping a Boston happy and healthy. What's your shoe? Tell me about your shoe. Generally not vocal dogs, they can become excitable if they can't burn off some of their natural energy. He's a little obsessed with his frisbee. Be on the lookout for overheating in a Boston, something that can happen quite easily. 
this breed thrives in cooler environments, yet their smooth coat and small body make them susceptible to the cold as well. Named for where the breed originated, the Boston Terrier has been a favorite of city dwellers for more than 100 years. This little dynamo is also the state dog of Massachusetts and the mascot of Boston University. But the Boston Terrier is not just a big city dog. Although it does great in apartments, it's happy wherever you are. Big or small houses, high rises or farms, just about anywhere there are people or kids to interact with, the Boston Terrier fits right in. Boston Terriers tend to be more of a family dog, they're, so they're a great breed to begin with as far as a family. Bostons love people, they love all people. They love children, they love old people, <laughs> they love everyone. Um, and they want to sit on everyone's lap and kiss their face. The Boston is not a picky eater, but will do best on a high quality diet that's designed for small breeds. For more tips on healthy diets, visit FidoTVChannel.com or download the Fido TV mobile app. Are you thinking that the Boston Terrier is the woof for you? Let's run down this little champ's attributes to see if the Boston Terrier is destined to be your number one. Coming up, find out if the Boston Terrier is a perfect match for you. Learn more about this lively breed when Which Whoops For Me returns. Doesn't matter where you live, high rise, suburbs, or down on the farm, the Boston Terrier will adapt to your living arrangement. Plus, house training this intelligent breed is normally a breeze. The Boston's temperament is lively, engaging, and friendly. It needs the company of its family to be happy and well-adjusted, and will share the spotlight with other pets if introduced correctly. Bostons do do very well with other dogs in the house. Bostons are very playful, very ingratiating dogs, and they get along very well with other pets in the house. Alert and attuned to whatever activity you're engaged in, the Boston Terrier is described as mid-energy and is happy to use up some of that energy whenever you give the cue. Moderate exercise is all that's needed. The Boston's smooth coat always looks spiffy and requires only light grooming with a soft bristle brush once or twice a week. It doesn't shed much, but health and appearance will benefit from frequent face washing. Bostons are very easy to groom. They're pretty much wash and wear. Um, even for show, we don't do a lot to a Boston. Um, a bath every now and then and a good brushing every couple days is really all they need. Generally considered to be a healthy breed, the Boston Terrier's short snout may contribute to breathing problems in hot, humid weather. But if it doesn't get overheated and has a cool, shady spot to rest, life is good. They are not suited to outdoor life. They love to sunbathe, but obviously they don't have a lot of hair to them. So Boston Terriers do need to have usually coats if you live in a winter climate and outdoor for very short periods of time. Good nutrition plays a strong role in the Boston's good health. High quality dog food made for small breeds is always good, but ask your breeder for specific recommendations or visit the Fido TV website or mobile app for more help. Just watch the amount of treats that you give them. Maybe use baby carrots or green beans in, or maybe some fruit instead of the dog treats. And if you know you've given them a lot of treats, maybe cut back their dinner that night. The AKC breed standard calls the Boston Terrier friendly and lively with an excellent disposition and a high degree of intelligence. It's the perfect size. It adapts well to wherever you live. It loves family life, including kids and the elderly, and it's easily socialized to new people or other pets. If you have a zest for life you want to share with a four-legged friend, the Boston Terrier might be the wolf for you. Be sure to learn more by visiting akc.org or the Boston Terrier Club of America website. Coming up, the fourth most popular dog in the country and a superstar in New York and LA. Find out if the Bulldog is your kind of wolf. He's a lover, not a fighter. But in 13th century England, the Bulldog was originally bred to bait bulls. When the cruel sport became outlawed in 1835, bullies were bred down from a mix of Mastiff and Pug to work on farms. The breed eventually became an even-tempered, calm dog. They were bred to be bull baiters way back in the early years, and they were ferocious, but 100 years later, that's all bred out of them, 
and they're very gentle, and we don't tolerate anything in the way of aggression. They're very, very sweet. This thick-set, low-slung bruiser was recognized by the American Kennel Club in 1886 and now claims the AKC rank of number four in popularity. Is the Bulldog the right wolf for you? Let's find out. Classified as a medium-sized breed, adult female bullies weigh about 40 pounds, and adult males tip the scales at about 50 pounds. The Bulldog is categorized as a non-sporting breed, but don't let that squat figure fool you. A Bulldog loves to jump and play, and some are famous for skateboarding. Everyone is a little bit different. This one happens to be very affectionate. She wants to be near me, let me sit with her, and she hopes nobody else will come near. Some are just real stoic. Others are, love to play with people. They love kids. I love the Bulldog. This colorful breed ranges from solid white to solid red, along with brindles of various hues. Keeping them groomed is relatively mm. easy, and they like the attention. They'll happily accept daily face washings. Shedding is not too much of a concern with the Bulldog's short, smooth coat, but it does shed. Use a soft dog brush a couple times a week to keep those coarse hairs from getting all over everything. For grooming tips, visit FidoTVChannel.com or download the free Fido TV mobile app. Bulldogs are generally healthy. However, there are some conditions that are specific to the breed, such as respiratory problems, arthritis, and dysplasia. Obtaining a bully from a reputable breeder is a must to help offset health concerns. The Fido TV website and mobile app can link you to reputable AKC breeders. As far as health issues, um, they're moderate because they have a short nose and they can have some problems depending on the, the background of the breeding, which most bulldoggers uh, have them bred to a point where all that's gone. If you go to a, a bulldog person who's respected through the BCA, uh, they'll have healthy bulldogs. The good breeder has put in many, many years of devotion and time and experience trying to breed a healthy puppy. See that face? This is not a dog that racks up frequent flyer miles. <laughs> Breathing difficulties make bulldogs poor air travelers and flying should be avoided if possible. And check out those broad shoulders and short legs. Bulldogs are built close to the ground and should wear life jackets when on or near water. They're poor swimmers, but great splashers in shallow depths. They're not good around water, you know. People have seen them surfing and that sort of thing, but most bulldogs can't swim. So if you've got a, a, a pool or there's a pond or a lake around you, you've got to be very careful that that dog doesn't go close there because they do not swim. They sink real easily. Bulldogs love a walk or running around in the yard with the kids. Watch out for nipping and don't let the bully get away with it they can be stubborn about some behaviors. Moderate exercise will keep the dog healthy and go a long way in establishing you as the leader of the pack. I tell people, if you buy a bulldog, uh, if you take it for a walk, expect to carry it back because they're not real uh, athletic as a rule. Some of them are, but for the most part, a good bulldog is pretty docile, pretty laid back. Early socialization and lots of handling are a must for this breed to keep them well balanced and behaving properly. Plus, bulldogs don't like teasing or loud games. It's important to teach this breed and the kids to play nicely together. Bulldogs are one of the most social breeds that I've ever been around. They want people. They really don't like being left alone. It might look a bit like a couch potato, but the bulldog is an alert and protective breed. With the right owner, the bully can be trained to be a watchdog and recognize the difference between a friendly stranger and an intruder. My bulldogs like to be with us. They like to be with family. They like to be included in everything. They like to play with balls. They love to chew bones and toys. Since they don't need a lot of room to be happy, the bulldog will be content wherever you reside. A bulldog on the gridiron is a common sight. Despite its easygoing demeanor and pleasant disposition, the Bulldog is often typecast as a tough opponent in the sports world. They look rough and they look tough and they can intimidate. And, and these mascots, that's what you want. I mean, we've got this tough team and we're Bulldogs. They have this 
image of being this tough dog, well, they're big, big babies most of the time. That's just a facade. They're nothing like what their image is out there. <laughs> More than 40 sports teams, including the University of Georgia, Yale, South Carolina State University, and Mississippi State University, all claim the Bulldog as official mascot. The Bulldog was also first dog on at least two occasions. President Warren G. Harding had a bully, and Calvin Coolidge's was named Boston Beans. Bulldogs love their food, but a fat bully will become unhealthy. And since Bulldogs take feeding time pretty seriously, it's best not to disturb them while eating. Talk to your breeder about amount and quality of food. More tips on feeding are available on the Fido TV website or the Fido TV mobile app. I think one of the big problems pet owners would have is they tend to overfeed them. They give them treats. I've seen some come back and I say, oh, you got your bulldog way overweight. And they say, well, he likes cookies, you know. They've got to maintain them on a pretty good diet uh, of, of healthy food and not get them overweight. Rugged, solid, and conveying an image of strength and durability, it's no wonder that Mack Truck started using the Bulldog as its corporate symbol in 1922, and still does. When we return, we'll run down the Bulldog bio to see if it matches your criteria for perfect pet. This handsome dog turns heads wherever it goes. But is the Bulldog the right woof for you? Ranked fourth in popularity by the AKC, the breed standard calls for a general appearance and attitude that suggests stability, vigor, and strength. Let's find out if your lifestyle meshes with what the bully needs to be more than just a pretty face. This medium-sized canine will live anywhere you desire. They're happy in a house or an apartment and will normally house train fairly quickly. This breed just looks tough, but if raised right, they're surprisingly gentle, calm dogs with sweet dispositions and don't bark much. They're affectionate and will form strong bonds with kids. The bulldog can be stubborn and may try to throw his weight around if he feels he can get away with it. A strong pack leader is needed. Bulldogs can be a little bit stubborn when they're trained, but with work, and experience and the right moves, you can make a dog, a bulldog, do a lot of things. The bulldog won't drag you out the door for a brisk walk, but this medium energy breed needs regular exercise. A daily walk or romp in the yard is perfect. Bulldogs don't require exercise much at all. They love to be a couch potato, just as this one is. They do like to play in the yard. They're able to play in the yard as long as the temperatures aren't extremely hot or extremely cold. The Bulldog needs minimal care. Daily face washing keeps that mug clean and healthy, and a couple of brushings each week will help control shedding. Bonus, they like to be fussed over a bit. Generally considered to be a hardy breed, the Bulldog does not suffer from too many health problems. The facial structure may contribute to respiratory problems, and its substantial build can induce hip and joint weaknesses. Head off any issues by finding a vet that knows this breed inside and out, and always choose a reputable breeder for a Bulldog puppy, which can be found at akc.org or by contacting the Bulldog Club of America. If someone's considering buying a Bulldog, I think they should research the breed. Always go to the Bulldog Club of America's website and find out is that the breed for their, for their family, their situation. Be sure to buy from a good breeder. Food is important to the Bulldog. It needs good nutrition from a high quality diet and likes to eat in peace. Food possessiveness is something to watch out for. Keep the small kids away from the dog's food bowl and don't feed other pets while the Bulldog eats. Control food amounts to avoid obesity and ask the vet or your breeder for suggestions on how to help a bully lead a long and happy life. The Bulldog is not easily disturbed and is known to be fun and friendly with other pets and kids. It may not look like a lap dog, but this breed loves to be next to you and cuddle up anywhere you'll allow for some special one-on-one -on -one time. <laughs> when dozing or running or just lying around, the Bulldog wheezes, pants, snuffles, and yes, snores. We're doing many health tests on our dogs to check their trachea to make sure it's normal, to check their nares, that they're open. And you still may get some bulldogs that snore, 
or some dogs that make some funny noises, but that's just the bulldog. But with a face as sweet as this, and such a lovable disposition, who cares? Do they make a good family pet? Oh, absolutely. Because they, are, are, they adopt to young children, uh, they attach themselves, uh, they, they want um, attention all the time, um, they're easy going, they're not uh, real rambunctious. They love little kids. They just can't get enough love and they want all the attention you can give them. In my experience, when people have had a bulldog, they always come back and want another bulldog. Not one to be bossed around. A bully will form a partnership with an owner when learning basic yeah. tasks and commands. Yeah. Rewarding with a yeah. few little yeah. dog treats is an excellent motivator. <laughs> what the bulldog wants most, though, is you. Playtime, family time, petting, and the security and confidence of being loved. The more you're around bulldogs, they're just kind of an all-around family pet kind of dog. They're, they're not real um, active. Um, they're kind of passive, uh, yet they're very loving. If you can provide that, the bulldog could be the whoop for you.